There's a little boy with the ball in the window. At the end of a quiet street is a haunted house, 24 hours to investigate Charnock Hall. When you're in this house, you can tell there's a presence. Hello and welcome to Most Haunted. Now, most people think that ghosts like to reside in old drafty castles in the middle of nowhere. Well, we've come to a quiet cul-de-sac on the outskirts of Preston, where we found a house that is so paranormally active that the Most Haunted team are going to spend 24 hours investigating. Charnock Hall has a long history and was once owned by the royal family. In the 17th century, Robert Charnock, a Catholic priest, lived here. It was around this time that Catholicism was frowned upon and many masses were conducted here in secrecy. The current owners and past residents have witnessed dark, shadowy figures that look remarkably like priests. Well, Jason, there's been previous investigations at Charnock Hall. What sort of things have happened here? Well, I think probably one of the most interesting events happened to two different people on the same night, and that was they went upstairs to use the bathroom, and when they came to exit the room, they couldn't, they couldn't get out of the door. It was being pushed from the other side. Mm. They also had a transfiguration experience where several people saw a person's face change into what they thought was a nun because it had a cross hanging around. And also, all the electricity flicked off for no reason, and Carol, who owns Charnock Hall, said it never happened before. One of the theories behind that is that ghosts actually can use mains electricity in order to manifest. Now, there's absolutely no scientific basis to this, but it's a popular psychic theory. Now, Derek Akora, our spiritualist medium, he's actually on his way to the location. He has got no history whatsoever of Charnock Hall, so I think it's going to be a very interesting evening altogether. For the first time, none of our crew felt scared or threatened about staying all night at Charnock Hall. The house seemed to have a very comfortable atmosphere, but as we all know, feelings and atmospheres can change, especially when it gets dark. When I took the staircase out, it was the first time I really noticed something. There was just a pair of ladders up to the bedroom, so I could get upstairs, and I heard people walking up and down the stairs, and there was no stairs here. So I was quite excited, really. My stereo player comes on in the middle of the night and my television switches on in the middle of the night as well. Yeah. A friend of mine came round and he sat outside in the car and he said, who's Carol got round? Who's the little boy with the ball in the window? And they said, nobody's Carol's in there on her own. And there was a little boy in the front room window upstairs bouncing a ball. We came here for a seance actually and um, it was a very interesting night. When I arrived, there was a really strange humming noise, and I was the first to arrive, and it was really loud, and that was really noticeable, and then other people arrived and it stopped. And I was looking for something electric, but there wasn't anything. Anyway, we went on and had the seance, and all sorts happened, but what really sticks in my mind is when I went to the toilet, upstairs. And I've been loads of times, it didn't bother me at all. This particular night, I went in the toilet, washed my hands, and as I was coming out, the door had closed, and it wouldn't open, and it wasn't locked. So we had um, a few little lights that came in the room, and we all sat round, and they kept flying round us, and then they disappeared into the corner of the room. And then one of the ladies that was here, who I didn't really know, I'd never met her before, was, um, she went into a she went into another figure. She just turned into somebody different, like a, a nun with a cross, and a, a, she went old and her neck was elongated, and it was quite scary, really, when we were looking at her, and she couldn't speak. She was youngish, I think she was blonde, and she was four or five ladies along the left to me. And during the seance, I could hear other ladies on the other side saying that she was changing, so I looked, and I couldn't get full frontal face, but I definitely saw her neck grow and she aged. She was just, she couldn't speak. And I was thinking, this is really weird. <laughs> and then temperatures changed. 
cold, really hot, and everybody was noticing it. We were holding hands and suddenly everybody was burning or everybody was really chilly. It was really an interesting night. The middle bedroom is the, the one that's got definitely things happening in there. That's the one where my friend experienced the monk sitting on the bed. A medium picked up the most spirits in that room and my friend won't sleep in that room. And in fact, a lot of people won't go in that room. <laughs> I feel protected, I don't feel frightened at all. It's a, it's a really nice, whoever's here, they're, they're looking after me. My stage, when I put the house on the market, which, which I really didn't want to sell, but I have to do for certain th reasons, um, she came in and sat in the front room and uh, she took all the details of the house and the, you know, the measurements of the rooms and stuff. And she just said to me, Carol, somebody just sat next to me on the settee. And she said, and what they want to know, they told me to tell you that you have to make your mind up what you want to do. You do know there's something here. When you're in this house, you can tell there's a presence, definitely. But it's nothing to be frightened of at all. I do have a friend that comes and stays pretty regularly at the moment, and uh, she's had a few experiences of little things happening, and she won't come upstairs without me, and she won't go to the toilet without me, and she won't sleep upstairs. She has to sleep downstairs. <laughs> Well, this house is a private house. It's not well known as a haunted location. There are, however, a lot of historical facts that we do know, despite the fact that it's not particularly important in paranormal terms. The most important family connected with the hall, and the reason it's called Charnock Hall, is the Charnock family, the principal member of which was Robert Charnock. Now, he was a Catholic priest in the area, quite an important person when it was deeply legal to practice the Catholic faith in the 17th century. And he, when he died, signed the house over to his housemaid or house servant, who was called Grace Bold, in the hope or in the trust that she would continue to allow the building to be used for Catholic mass. Now, she decided not to do that, and when she got hold of the building, she decided to use it for her, her own ends. Now, people have said that they've seen spirits or phantoms here with long robes, and that may be explainable if you believe in the ghosts that people say they've seen as Catholic priests, because there are priest hides here in the house. This is the oldest part of the building and I absolutely love it. It's so welcoming and warm. But in spite of that, the owner had a friend who brought their dog here and all the dog did was cower under the table. It was absolutely petrified. Although this room is pretty, I don't like it. Now, a guest was sleeping here and she woke up in the middle of the night to find two monks sitting on the end of her bed starting to have a conversation with her. Well, she didn't hang around. She stood up, screamed and ran out. Well, this is the main living room of the house and a lot of paranormal activity goes on here. Now, Carol, the lady who owns the house, is asleep upstairs in bed and all of a sudden she'll hear the stereo and the television come on of their own accord. She'll come downstairs, switch them off and go back to bed again. Not only is it inconvenient, but there's just no way I would stay and live in a house like this. With our spiritualist medium, Derek Acora, joining the rest of our crew, we had time to talk about what may happen tonight and how we were all feeling. 100% too paranormal. However, when you sat in the edit suite, it's very easy to take judgment on what you see. But now that I'm here and I know that the lights are going to go off later, I'm not sure how I'm going to react to it. I am a little apprehensive. When I first arrived to the property, I was virtually jolted back. It was like a, a short charge of electricity. And that is always a sign to a sensitive um, that a ley line, and quite a strong ley line, is, is, is attached underneath um, this property here. It can help the spirit entities to be experienced more than if there was no ley line there. I have no idea what I'm expecting to happen tonight. Um, one thing I don't like is the middle bedroom. It, it frightens me for some strange reason. That's probably me being silly. Um, but we shall see a little bit later on. The only time I get frightened is when um, there's something, whatever location I could go into, that I personally or Sam, firstly that I don't understand, I've not come across before. See, when we were in when we were in Ostrich Inn, yeah. I'm, I swear you probably tell me to, to shut up, but when we were at Ostrich Inn, you were gripping my hand so tightly. Yes, by touching and holding, mm. that is your reality base 
still with another person in the physical body. That is your contact. Right. Is it not also the fact that at the end of the day, you're a medium by your profession and by your life, but you are also a human being, and human being get, beings get scared? But there's a little part of that as well. Because I've seen you when you seem to be slightly edgy. I mean, at Chillingham Castle, you were slightly edgy, not when you were in your medium, sort of performing your mediumship, mm. but when you were being Derek Akora, not Derek Akora the medium, yes. you seem to be slightly edgy. And I, I think that that's because you're a human being. And I yeah. don't think anyone will eradicate that, whether they're in tune with the spirit world or not. Yeah, I agree with that because, I mean, after all said and done, I am human. And, um, you know, every medium's human. And it, it's very good that you bring this up. However, with the um, amount of times in hands-on experience of the different locations over the years, the further it goes on, the lesser or likelihood of that fear factor showing bodily in the body mm. language um, diminishes. But it si suddenly comes back to the fore when I come across, as I've done just recently in some of our locations, some of the uh, we've investigated, something that is I haven't experienced before. Mm. And that does get you edgy, yeah. yeah. Mm. But if you've experienced it and it comes again mm. on another location because you've experienced it, mm. you say, well, I can cope with it a bit more because I know what's coming. But what reaction do you get from Sam when, you, when, when that's happening, when you're having that fear, that Derek Okora fear? I shout at him. I shout at him quite, even if you can't hear me, I'm shouting mentally, Sam, Sam, you know, I'm, I don't truly understand this. Are you there? Are you alongside me? Are you going to retrieve me? Are you going to bring me back? Because you were angry with him. Yeah. At, at, at one point. I, I was. Yeah. I was, Yvette, and that was because that experience mm. I'd never allowed, or even Sam had, um, let's say, persuaded me mm. to allow myself to become that, like, if that's the right word, complete vessel mm. for that spirit entity mm. to either talk or uh, be noticed within the atmosphere through my physical... Uh, how, how easy is it for spirits to actually enter, as it were, into um, a human body? Where you, you've seen films and, and, and you, you've, we see you do it as well, where mm. you sort of, you become this other person, you have another voice. How easy is that to achieve? It's easy, um, it, it's quite easy if the vessel, meaning the instrument, the person, openly allows... But sometimes you hear people that they don't want that to happen, do they? That, you know. Chewing them with me, that's a prime yes, example. Yes, yeah, when, when Rick was there, I mean, he didn't... Ooh, yeah, but we know. perceived that experience as being a spirit entering Rick. We didn't put it down in rational terms to all the other poss possibilities of what it could have been. Mm. You know, we're perceiving it there, as you've just put it across, as if it was a spirit entry. But you just, I don't believe it was. It still, still fascinates me how there is such a big difference between believers and non-believers and all the various accounts you get. I mean, Do you, do you believe in, <coughs> in ghosts, Rick? 100%, yeah. For the stuff it does that, now. For the stuff that I've seen, mm. I mean, what's happened to me at various locations, from what I've heard from Derek, but I also take on the views of what Jason's saying as well. There is reasons, I mean... I've sat back and thought to myself, have I seen something paranormal? And Jason spoke to me and come up with a logical reason, and we found out that reason has been true. But there is other stuff that has happened, mm. which has made me think there's absolutely no logical explanation for it at all. That There is something out there. Neil, do you believe in ghosts? <clears throat> when I started, um, started on this job, I was completely in the middle. And I think now I'm swaying towards 80%. Really? Belief, yeah. We were all ready to start our investigation, but for some reason we couldn't stop giggling. There was no reason for this happening at all, but we were brought back down to earth as a cupboard under the stairs opened on its own. Wait, 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 what's that? No, come on. Oh, God. There's a little boy, it's one of three that's here. There's three children, he's one of them that was upset, okay. Can you see this, him? Yes, a little boy. He's, uh, I would say, in uh, the way he's looking at me, um, he's lost a number of his teeth here. Um, I suppose you'd say scruffy-haired little lad. Um, but I feel what's coming from is a, a heart of gold, a beautiful little boy. Um, had a problem with um, his right leg, um, an impediment. Um, he's one of three children that are not in visitation here in this lovely home. He's here, semi-resident, so to speak, um, 
and uh, it's because of this little boy. I noticed a cat, and you know, this is why this cat is drawn and attracted here to this property because of the activity of the children. He's actually, the cat can link in with the vibrations of the children who play upstairs. Uh -huh. They're upstairs, but um, there's a connection with these children and another resident individual spirit gentleman here. <laughs> One of the little girls um, is called Roseanne or Rosani, and the boy, I feel this the boy here, who's Anthony. <sighs> these children go up the flight of stairs, they go along the landings, they go towards a, one particular bedroom. You'll show me, Sam? Okay, that's where I was getting the emanations before, okay? And also, the prayer state, they're attracted to the prayer state. They come from the time. What time zone, Sam? Yes. 40 years. 40 years after the established foundations of this building. 40 years. So what year would that be, Sam, that these children are linked to? 1664. 1664. <coughs> to go back. I think it's important to note this door does not have a latch and opens naturally of its own accord, which is why it's been sellotaped shut and that the gaffer, the gaffer table simply come unhinged. Un That's why it does that. I mean, if you, if you leave that now, if we do an example. Right, well, it was like that, and it was stuck down yeah. like that. And it has been like that for some time. So when the gaffer tape, if you leave it, if you, yeah, if you but leave it. Yeah, but that, the gaffer tape comes unstuck. Yeah. And it opens of its own accord. OK, well, that may be. Mm. Well, you know, as you just said, that may be a vet. There's a little boy here. He's one of three. He's a charming little child. There's nothing negativity, negative about him. And it's because of these ch three children. The amazing thing about the cat, the attraction of the cat, you know, and I feel this goes back. I really feel so strong to say that cat, in incarnation into this lifetime now, has had some kind of link with these children in a previous time. The cat has? Yes. This is why this cat has just suddenly turned up. You mean the physical cat that, that The physical cat there. that's come here now. He's turned up. He's turned up at the... You see, I feel it's because <clears throat> now, and I do know this because speaking very briefly to Carol Leona, when she said that she was, you know, selling up and what have you, this often happens with spirit people uh, uh, linked either children or adults to a particular property. I've seen this so many times in the past where an, a hive of activity takes place when, as the children like the lady, also the gentleman, which I'll talk about, hopefully he'll show himself upstairs, um, are a little bit despondent or down. They've liked her being here. Right. They've enjoyed yeah. it. And maybe they're thinking, hey, who's going to come here next? What? Do you, are you picking up anything in this particular part of, of, of the house? You see, I want to talk about something to do with um, um, the, the foundations. I know for a fact, an absolute spiritual fact, that this property is lying, is foundational on top of a very, very, very um, strong ley line. There's no two ways. Oh, it's so strong here. And, you know, I'm also being taken back in thought with this gentleman going back in time and there's a very strong connection. It might not be this particular home and it goes back before when? 1626. Let's go back beyond and down because as we go from... It's a monastery. But that's subsided. That is not so active these days. It was, it was, it was known by previous owners. It was known of the monks walking through. Hooded monks. Oh. Oh. How long, when, when were monks here? 14, 15, 14, 1400 and something. Why were there monks here in this house? It w not in this house. Before so this house. This building before the yes. house. On this site? Yes. 
here. What, but going building? back, going back, like a, a not a full monastery, but a um, what, what do they call that? A cut off from a monastery where there was monks in prayer state. That's the connection. So there was a monastery that these people, these monks, were attached to, but they were here separate for a reason, away from the main monastery. How do you fancy turning the lights off? Love it. OK, should turn the lights off? Yeah, Love it. Let's go. Yeah. 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 With the lights off, we decided to go upstairs into the middle bedroom. This is the room where ghostly figures are seen on a regular basis, and it's a room that I didn't like. See, now, I'm very aware, um, at times, um, during the day and the evening, um, of childishness and child play um, feelings of uh, laughing and giggling um, and uh, a hive of activity of three children I feel a wonderful band of two little girls and a little boy. Um, the little boy, a bit of a scallywag. I feel um, from the time that they go back from or to, they would have had to, for some reason, um, fend for themselves. And I feel there's a, so much the strong link with this particular individual monk that in actual fact they went to him and I feel that the tenderness of his heart, he fed these children. And this is why there's an akin ship to him. And yet, earlier, I felt as if it was from a different time, and it's not. Both interlinking at the same time. So, you know, I can get things slightly wrong until I come into the atmosphere. You see, the energy, this monk is listening right now, Yvette, Jason, to this conversation. And yet... I don't like this room. Yeah, he's... Why? I don't like it. He's listening, and you don't like it. No. I also feel, maybe in a previous owners, not the actual owner today, but the previous owners would have felt that there was poltergeistal activity here. Through their ignorance, um, kindred ig ignorance, um, they would have mistaken the, the children's playfulness and their energy, collectively, three of them, if they were going together, running through and what have you, they would most definitely, most definitely cause um, individual items to probably either crash, fall, which would probably then give the, the fright of mm. almighty to the residents here. You see, the knocking of doors and noises are most definitely attributed to the children. Playfulness, not poltergeistal, anything like that. Now, where the monk is concerned, he's such a, he won't mind me saying it, a quiet sort of man. Quiet disposition. It, I feel he has been seen. He should have been seen. But his conditions most definitely favour the main bedroom in this building. Like the master bedroom? Yeah. Very interesting because... On the way to the main bedroom, Derek was picking up on the children again, and they seemed to know about some of the strange activities in the house. Be interesting, could you check, please, also about the electricity here in the building, because it went all haywire, and the children are very aware of it. OK, they want to give proof that they are aware of the electricity and the problems that they've had here, and they're very aware of it. They congregate. This is his energy field. He was a far reaching in his thoughts, far beyond any monk of his day. That's why he was uh, designated here with a group of monks, um, most definitely linked to the main conditions in Chorley. And you know, he was such a kindred soul, this man, and especially where children were concerned. Um, Thomas Michael. Thomas Michael. Um, oh, look, he goes to that old cove there. He really believes in that. What, what's in that old cove? Can I just have a look? Okay. There's something behind. 
behind there. There's something behind there. Blocked. What was behind there? Between there and the loo, this is where Thomas used to, quite regular, go down on his knees into his own personal prayer state. And he, um... He was against the witchcraft, okay. Oh God, is that one Tom? Here as well. Um, in this area, very strong, not in this dwelling, but in this area, um, there was a, a very, very high uh, incidence uh, at his time um, of conditions of a, uh, a negative, um, dark uh, practice in witchcraft. Um, and in those times, there was a number of females um, that were actually um, late to slaughter because of um, being um, classified as witches. These three children were protected by Thomas Michael. No harm come to him, to those, especially the boy, for some reason, that the impediment was um, uh, caused by um, an elder who um, damaged the boy. Um, Spiked his leg in actual fact after he was stealing food, but Thomas uh, mended that leg. Bless him. He was very spiritual, this man. He still is. Very kind, kindred soul. I feel that the cat, um, the cat that is presently here, um, is from the links of their time, reincarnated, um, and has found his way. Uh, of his age, the cat, thank you Sam, physically is seven years of age, comes from a home that has got 14 on its front door, that is local, though not too far away. He's lost his way, but people say he's lost his way, but he hasn't. He's found his way to the children, especially to Anthony. That's Thomas. Ask Thomas to do something, Sam. I felt something on Ask the bed. Thomas to do something right Just now, please. Something on the bed. Okay. Whereabouts? Here behind me, like a tiny little thump down the other side of me. Do you see? This is, um, this room is at different times. There's no... Do you like it all right? Do you like it all right? Do it to me. <laughs> oh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't that, it was not like somebody sitting well, there. What was it? Like it's, like, it's like, it was like... On you or no, on the bed? No, no, on the bed. It was like... Like a mm. depression or something? But only small. Press the bed. Only small. Mm. This in here, you know of it. Mm. This bathroom here. Okay, very strongly, for some reason, is where I felt like the, um, the covering and the hood was placed over my head, and um, he, you see, he was n nowhere near as tall as me, um, and not a heavy set person, but I, I felt the sincerity. I mean, some people can pray, and they mean nothing, and some people pray with sincerity, and this man was nothing but goodness. Nothing but goodness, um, personified, if you like. But you know, the, it's a healthy, a very healthy atmosphere. This is why these children um, are so loving being here. Um, why don't I like that room then? Pardon? Why don't I like that room? That room? <sighs> Surely you can answer that question. Do you feel uncomfortable? Is it? Does it? Give you some sort of fear. I, I just I can't explain it. I just don't feel I don't feel right in there. It doesn't have an effect on me at all. No, it makes mm. me feel uncomfortable. Did it make you feel uncomfortable, Carl? Yeah, I did earlier. Yeah. When we first came here, yeah. I went into that room, not knowing that what you know anything had gone on mm. in any specific rooms. But I, I, I did yeah. say I felt uncomfortable, and quite depressed in there. When I was talking earlier on about the black um, links with the witchcraft mm -hmm. and what have you. Um, that is really um, null and void uh, in, in its energy and essence. 
However, because I was um, receiving that at some time, the conditions may have been that a, an individual or person um, was accustomed, uh, poss more possible than not, a lady that was, um, and I'm talking about going way back mm. now, um, would have been uh, maybe practicing. Um, she may have been one of the ladies within the area who were slain because of the black witchcraft or were accused of being. What do you mean slain? Well, put to death. Put to physical, you know, having their life taken away from them because not of their beliefs but their practices. Mm. Um, I also feel that this group uh, were uh, collectively, not individually, but collectively were um, not a good thing for children around. This is why this monk protected these three, took them into, it was like a father figure to them. Mm. And maybe that's why you were feeling what <clears throat> you were feeling. Or maybe, maybe they, I'm just, you know, imagining things. Mm. But you know when you just, I know when I walk into friends' houses, you either mm. like them or you don't like them. Yeah. And I didn't mm. like that. Well, really. everybody does that when yeah. you buy a house. They go in and they yeah. think, does it feel nice? Does yeah. it feel I think unpleasant. there has to be a reason for a, a feeling why. Mm. You feel unpleasant in certain rooms. Yeah. You don't. You don't know. That doesn't have to be paranormal. No, it doesn't. No, I'm not saying it does. I, I'm, I just Six, can't explain it. Sixteen twenty-six was the time. Someone lived in fear of a group of people turning up on horseback. And it's got sixteen twenty-six. Is it? There's a history, a strong history, to the time of 1626, a very significant change that took place to the foundations and the conditions of where we stand now, of it. Mm. Absolutely. And that was the monk who impressed that with me. Very strong. Obviously, apart from the monk, these three children, I can almost guarantee 100% that these children, what they've done, what they do, can be experienced and picked up by the present occupiers of this home now. Mm -hmm. I feel so certain about this mm -hmm. because of the energy as I've walked through and You see, as we've got the quietude now of late, late at night, I feel possibly the children generally will hold on until everyone's minds are calmed down, either into sleep or falling into sleep, and then they would really come to the fore then. Right. That would be interesting to check, okay. more so than in, in the daytime. But right. people, when they fall into sleep, are more likely to have allegedly paranormal occurrences oh, and experiences. Yes, I agree. Because they're in a dream state. Yeah, I agree. But I'm talking about whilst they're still awake and maybe reading a book or something. And just being quiet. Well, just Relaxed, being quiet, yeah. yeah. Calm. And I feel it's then that they really centre their thought and energy to try and draw attention through whatever they're doing by making noises and what have you. And I feel they find it much easier, these three, because they group together. They don't do it individually. They group together. So they put all their energies right. in collectively, you see. Mm. Well, do you think then we should go and have a break and maybe we can all yeah. sit mm. down mm -hmm. and relax and yes. see what happens? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. 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 I hope they do. John Ock Hall had proved intriguing. If Derek was correct, and the monk-like figure prays in the alcove, maybe it was his spirit who likes to shut the bathroom door. Now that we knew about the children and a monk, we wanted to try a seance. We knew that seances had been conducted here before with positive results, but would anything happen to us? Is there any spirit presence or entity of any kind who wishes to communicate with us here? Please give us a sign that you can hear us and understand us. If you are there, 
bem isso que é necessário. Can I just call a, a stop to this and put a light on? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. I just think it's fair. Rick's odd behaviour was a little worrying. He didn't want to speak much and kept feeling his hands. It took a while for Rick to come round. Why had this happened? No one knows. In previous seances, we had experienced cold spots, floating orbs and something touching us. But in this seance, everyone had internal feelings and it took us some time to feel normal again. After a break, we went back upstairs into the middle bedroom. Neil, Jason and myself sat quietly in the hopes that we would see something using our night vision cameras and an EMF meter. Don't you think I'm being very brave? Sitting here without one person to my left and one person to my right. <laughs> yes, actually you are. But you don't, said you don't feel scared now in here like you did no. earlier. Why do I not feel scared here? And I have done, and every, everywhere else we've gone. Going back to what Derek said, there wasn't anything particularly negative no. about what he said, and everything was quite happy. Oh, I got right at the bottom of the screen. It was quite big. Come on, if there's anybody in this room, can you show us some more? These little lights. Oh, that's got quite a sharp pain in the head. Oh gosh, good grief! Where are they on the floor? By the waste paper basket. Where's that? Just but, down here. Yeah. So we had managed to catch three orbs. They were small, but one of them moved in a very peculiar way, almost stopping to change direction. There were no drafts on the floor or any windows open, and dust was discounted. But it seemed odd that as we were talking about the supposed ghosts, these small orbs were showing up on camera. How much longer should we give it? Go and see what's happening downstairs. If not, we can go and swap over. Should we do that? Yes. As Carl, Rick and Stuart had caught nothing downstairs in the lounge, maybe now was a good time to swap rooms. Go to hold turn to see if we can come up with anything. I'll go over and sit in the corner. Uh, the guys are on the bed. I felt very really cold in this corner earlier. There's definitely something else here because it's warm now and it was definitely cold. There's no drafts in here, it's a very warm room. There's no reason for it to be cold here and it was earlier. Oh! Now that, I'm pointing exactly in the same place where uh, Jason, Neil and Yvette got an orb and something's just flown through screen. This light form was something we had not seen before. It seems to come from the bottom of the screen and float upwards and out of shot. After viewing it many times, we cannot explain what it is. We're now downstairs. So this is the room where we had the seance and we all felt a bit strange. If there's somebody in this room and you want us to know that you're in this room with us, can you give us a sign? Can you can you show that you're in this room? Oh my God! Something just moved across the screen. Did it? Something. Another small light was caught on both mine and Neil's camera. It travels past me, then towards Neil. Do you know? I'm sure things happen when you feel really sleepy. 
Well, statistically, a lot of sightings, a large portion of sightings, happen between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. And one of the reasons, as a possible theory put forward for this, is that a high percentage of people die between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. And that's because the human body is at its lowest ebb then, whether you're asleep or whether you're awake. And so with all the people dying at that time, it may be why people see ghosts at that time. Now again, it could all just be because people are being half asleep um, and having a dream. So it's o'clock in the morning. I'm so tired. Tiredness had eventually got the better of us. We were mentally and physically drained. Most of us had experienced heart palpitations, shortness of breath, headaches and trances. We were relieved our ghost hunt had come to an end. Even though we hadn't seen any ghosts, were these strange small lights called orbs anything to do with the spirit world? Some would say yes, others no. All we can say for now is they are unexplainable. As we were ready to conduct the, um, uh, the investigation, um, a door just absolutely slammed open um, to the left of us, and it stopped everyone on the track. Certainly stopped everyone laughing and giggling, um, which then was really the beginning of the investigation. The one thing that occurred last night, which I would like to look at in more depth, was uh, one of these orb anomalies that we've had caught in the past. This was caught in the middle bedroom upstairs where some of the ghostly activity has been reported in the past. And the difference with this orb to other ones is that its movement was sort of quite strange. It came into the shop quite quickly, seemed to stop and hover momentarily and then move off very slowly. It just seemed a little bit odd to me and I'd like to look at it in more detail. I feel that the three children, in actual fact, um, all, all of different ages, a little boy and two girls, actually um, found themselves leaving the physical body together. Um, I couldn't, uh, through my inquiries last night psychically, find out precisely how. And um, they're very lovely children. They, they bring a warmth. Um, if there are children that come into this property at any time, these children, the spirit bear children, would really, really uh, go to town in happiness. And uh, I think they're an absolute blessing. Well, Charlotte Hall isn't open to the public. Carol has absolutely no reason to make up or embellish stories about ghosts here, as perhaps some haunted inns and haunted castles do, because obviously that brings in the tourists and the money. So that makes it more interesting to me and gives it a bit more validity as a case worthy of investigation. 24 hours in Charnock Hall was certainly very interesting, but remember, your house may not be haunted, but you don't know what's going on in your neighbour's house, or indeed, the house at the end of your street. We shall see you on our next location. In the meantime, sleep tight. Get freaky with the lights off, though, man. Love is to this. Mm. Well. What was that for? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>